morning, everyone, and welcome to the PMBC <coughs> committee meeting for Wednesday, September 28th. Uh, I'm going to bring up the agenda, and if I can do that. <coughs> Share the screen. So we'll start out with uh, <coughs> the warrant. Um, we only have two items on the warrant here. <coughs> They're both for the Vertex company, both for the uh, solar panel project at the library. The first one uh, for $1,896 and the second one for $790 for a grand total of $2,686. I had distributed this earlier. Are there any questions from the committee? I make a motion we approve it, Bob Romley. Okay, is there uh, a second? Second. Mike Skaduda. Okay. Um, all in favor, Bob? Bob Rama, yes. Uh, Mike? Mike Skaduto, yes. Uh, uh, Bartlett? Where'd you go, Bartlett? Did we lose him? Well, we, yeah, it looks we... like you lost Bartlett. Uh oh. <laughs> We're probably going to have to come back to the uh, voting since he's uh, not here. We yep. need a quorum. So yes. uh, we'll move on to the library update, or the uh, Shaker Lane uh, feasibility study, and uh, let Steve Mark talk to that. Hi, good evening. Thanks for having me. Um, where do I start? So we are... Shaker Lane with MSBA is in what they consider phase one, the eligibility period. Um, there's a list of deliverables that we've been working on, uh, compliance certificate. Uh, the building committee, as you know, is formed and approved. Um, we've uh, completed the educational profile questionnaire and that's been submitted. We submitted the online enrollment projections. Um, the next um, steps, are there, um, we have to, we have to get with MSBA and MSBA has to certify the enrollment projections. Uh, the deadline for that is December 28th uh, and that's in process. Uh, there's also some maintenance and capital in planning information that's due uh, by December 28th. Um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll probably take care of most of that. That's an online questionnaire. I haven't even looked at it yet. Um, we already had the local vote authorization for the funds. Um, and then there's a feasibility study agreement. So uh, we can't really do, uh, we can't, we can't hire an OPM until we've actually been invited by MSBA to enter that feasibility, um, that feasibility study period um, to, to hire an OPM before that would um not be um, not be advised by MSBA at this point in time. We need to wait until we get invited into that feasibility study because at this point in time, we don't know if we're going to get invited into the feasibility study. The likelihood is is there that we will, um, but there's no guarantee. So, um, so that's where we're at at this point in time. Um, so, um, the feasibility study agreement. Uh, doesn't happen until uh, March 28th of next year, so we have a little bit of time. Um, again, once we get in, once we get invited into that feasibility study, um, the next phase, uh, then we start. Then we hire an OPM and we work with MSBA on uh, hiring an OPM. They have certain OPMs that are certified by MSBA and qualified by MSBA, uh, so we'll have to go out to bid on on all that. Uh, and MSBA has um, MSBA has uh, required forms and agreements um, that we will need to review um, and um, agree to um, while we're in that period. So that's where we're at at this point in time. So the process is moving forward. We're um, working on the list of deliverables that MSBA provided to us um, back in uh, April when we got accepted into the program. Um, and once those deliverables are done, we will get invited um, and contacted by MSBA, um, and we will have to go to one of their board meetings 
um, which I believe are all online, but we'll have to go to a board meeting and um, get invited into the next phase. So that's kind of where we're at at this point in time. Okay, thanks, Steve. Is there a uh, like a simple bar chart timeline that you could share with the uh, committee? That uh, sure, yep. I have a word document from MSBA. Um, I'll uh, Steve, I'll send it to you and PNBC. That'd um, be great. And then um, you guys can you can share it with uh, your members. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> Appreciate it. All right. Any uh, any questions for Steve? Okay. Now I see that Brian has joined us, so <clears throat> we now have a quorum. So I'm going to go back to the warrant, and uh, we'll uh, start this process over again. We have two items on the warrant, both for Vertex Corporation. Uh, Vertex Company, I should say, <clears throat> um, both for the solar project, one for eighteen hundred and ninety-six dollars, and one for nine hundred and I'm sorry, seven hundred and ninety dollars for a grand total of two thousand six hundred and eighty-six dollars. Is there a motion to approve? I'll renew, renew my motion to approve, Bob Rumley. <clears throat> I'll second again, Mike Scudino. All in favor, Bob. Bob Rumley, yes. Uh, Mike? Mike Scaduto, yes. Uh, Brian? Brian Pesquale, yes. And Steve Moore, yes. Motion carries. Thank you. <clears throat> Go back to the agenda. Um, Steve, do you have any other comments? Otherwise, we can uh, cut you cut you free. No, I was just uh, going to see what's going on in the little to high school roof, so I'll st probably stick around until you get to that part of the agenda. Well, why don't we do that next, Brian, if you're uh, prepared to talk about that? I, yeah, I don't have a whole lot to, to talk about, Steve, other than, the, you know, I, I think the we're status quo on the, the portion of the roof that um, we have funds allocated for. I think probably just the bigger question is, you know, the, the remainder of the roof, roof work that Steve brought up. And um, I saw Mike Scaduto's, you know, ballpark estimate that. Um, so I guess my only question is, are, are we we're still... I saw some comments about not wanting to piecemeal things, but we're still going after the portion that we have a design for, correct? Or um, Yeah, that's is, correct. I mean, this yeah, is okay. a d discrete portion of the uh, roof system. Right. Okay. Yeah. That was really my only question in, in business for the meeting to make sure that everyone's on board with, with proceeding with that today. And you're okay with that, Steve? Yeah, that's fine with me. Um, I, yep. I like that recommendation. Um uh, following Mike's um, information and guidelines, I, I do have a, a figure of four million dollars. I'm going to ask the town for um, whether we get it next year or at least we raise the awareness uh, to the town that this is a a, a, a big request. Um, and they can it, again if they don't fund it next year, then hopefully they fund it the year after that. Uh, the roof on the high school is now 22 years old. Uh, it's end of life. Um, the last time it rains, we had leaks where we've never had leaks before. Um, and again, you know, we call the roofing company. They come in, they find the leaks, they they patch them. Um, so it, it's time to start thinking about that roof. Um, so I appreciate all the help and the information you guys are um, providing. Okay, great. All right, we'll go back up to, uh, let's see, we did Shaker Lane. Uh, the library update, uh, Brian. Uh, yeah, th thank, th thank, you. Th thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you, everyone. And uh, Steve, if you ever need me to come, just give me a call and I'll attend anytime. Yeah, appreciate your. your okay, thank you. Tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Bye bye. Good. Thank uh, you, Steve. <clears throat> Brian? Yeah, to, to provide an update at the library, uh, I think the last time we spoke, we, I was still finalizing when the contractor was going to be on site with materials. We were hoping by the end of this month. I uh, was informed the day of uh, the 21st, so a week from today, that they were going to be mobilizing in two weeks. So that puts us at what, next week. Uh, the contractor will be on site installing the arrays, the optimizers, and the racks up on the library roof. Uh, I was told it's a short install. Uh, at that time, any other remaining pieces hopefully are uh, will be delivered during installation. If not, we will... Um, quantify what those are, what's remaining to be done to get the system operable. Uh, I spoke with the county department regarding the checks that we do have for the remaining contract uh, that we had to do uh, in order to make sure that we uh, suffice the state grant. Um, 
And besides that, with final costs, I'm working with Sam Alvarez, uh, the library director, to get the final MBLC report going uh, to justify all of the final costs. Um, and once the solar panels are complete, our lead study and submission can be done, uh, in which there would be an additional MBLC credit that comes back from the state once we understand what our achievement is in the lead uh, in the lead program. Uh, we're optimistic that uh, we will be at least certified. Uh, the hope being that with the uh, the solar panels, it might be able to bump us up into the silver category, therefore giving us a little bit more kickback uh, on the on the um, on the lead grant. So if we if we do get that um, <clears throat> bump up, what does that uh, what does that do for us dollar wise? Uh, I don't have the exact figures, but I, I believe it was to the tune of um, twenty to thirty thousand dollars more is, is what I believe it was. Yeah. And that would also help offset some of the overruns mm -hmm. from the additional solar project, the delta between what the actual grant was and what the total project budget was for the solar. Uh, there was a the small delta there. So, um, yeah, status quo with the library. It's, it's taken a little longer because of the lead times with this material. Um, but the hope is that we close this out soon. So <clears throat> I was over at the library uh, a week or so ago. I met with Sam. Um, he indicated that the um, the computer that uh, controls the building management system yep. was the issue. Because I, I think at the last meeting, we he said it was a switch, and I didn't understand the switch, but it's the uh, computer and the programs. So has anything been? Uh, yes. Uh, and so we've worked with the engineer of record and the and the BMS controls contractor. And I believe, are you referencing the uh, the energy consumption problems that we were having? Well, it was mostly the uh, heating and cooling cycling, I think. Yep. Yeah. And so we determined that um, the basis of design and the sequence of operations that was 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 built for the building um, was a little too conservative and the energy models that they had done originally for the building, we were not hitting those with the amount of uh, electricity and gas that we were expending out of the, out of the building. Um, we've worked with adjusting night setbacks, occupied and unoccupied schedules. And we're also trying to refine that even more with the controls contractor by even um, uh, getting a proposal from them for a, a probably a half a day or a day of work to kind of dial in these schedules and, and make the make the building even smarter uh, than what it was designed for, uh, to therefore try to to knock down as much energy consumption as possible even before we put solar panels on the building. So let me ask you this: um, <clears throat> the, uh, the you know the schedules are schedules change. So how easy is it going to be for uh, Sam and his team to modify those uh, yep. without having a uh, an advanced degree in computer science? Definitely understood. And so the intention is, uh, in working with Sam and the trustees, <clears throat> is to have the controls contractor to do as much back-end scheduling as he can, but then also putting on the front end uh, simpler ways that they're able to switch from, you know, maybe a holiday scheduling or... Um, uh, occupied mode if there's uh, any night meetings or weekend meetings that they're able to go in and, and set the building accordingly um, without affecting an overall schedule that's been set by the program. Okay, that's good. Any any other questions for Brian? <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> uh, next on to the police station, I know <clears throat> we closed this at the last meeting, but Bob wanted to leave it open uh, just because of the issue with the bowed window issue? I was going to try to catch up with the chief on that, uh, <clears throat> Steve, and I can't get him from out here. Yeah, I bet. Um, so maybe we'll just, we'll leave this on the agenda until we get that squared away. All right. When I come back, I'll make a, a point of seeing him to see what's actually going wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if, if I get a chance, uh, I'll reach out to him and uh, see if I can stop by. Sure. And let me know if there's anything you guys need of me. Okay. Uh, senior Center, Brian. Yep. And uh, bear with me. I do have a little bit of a uh, little bit of news on the Senior Center as we, we just had a meeting this afternoon with uh, our working group. 
uh, as well as the engineer of record who's proposing certain mechanical systems uh, and deliverables to the meeting. Um, I do also have a meeting with Anthony and Solly, the town administrator, and Mark Rambacher, uh, one of the selectmen, tomorrow to discuss kind of our total overall project budget uh, based upon what has been approved so far at town meeting uh, and what exactly is the expectations of the project and what's to be spent on that. Uh, as we get further into design, obviously we're trying to budget as much, we, as much as we can with design contingencies and escalation costs, but I wanna get a feel for um, what we've seen currently in our design development uh, and some of the asks that we're getting during our working group meeting, um, such as uh, sustainability goals, net zero goals, um, and, and fossil free, fossil fuel free uh, expectations. So with that said, I do, I, the question to the PMBC is going to be, uh, today I've, I've gotten two documents that I want to distribute to the, to the team uh, in the hopes that maybe at next meeting, um, we can finalize a direction that the, that the team wants to go. Uh, we were presented with um, a basis of design for mechanical systems at the new senior center. We had an option for an all electric design, and then we had an option for a geothermal design um, with all electric. With all the pros and cons, the upfront costs, the amount of uh, maintenance it might cost, the life cycle costs and the payback costs on that. Um, obviously, I saw a few heads shaking. I think that the geothermal is more just a, a, uh, an activity to show the upfront costs is probably not going to be something that the town has an appetite for, um, especially in our location. But the all-electric is something that um, ultimately I know that uh, there's a, a charge of uh, a lot of state municipalities to to go with an all-electric option. Uh, and I know with the library, it was more of a hybrid design. And after a year of occupation, um, they weren't as thrilled with the amount of gas consumption that they had done uh, based upon what they were told in uh, pre-design. So I have a, an energy model, a very pr primitive energy model of the senior center that I'd like to distribute to everybody. I spoke with Anthony and Mark. They both agreed with me that the PMBC should be reviewing this and ultimately making a, uh, a decision once I understand the total project budget with, with the um, select board and the town administrator. <clears throat> um, and then lay out all the facts and, and documents to you guys to ultimately make the decision on this. Um, well, we, we, we will not make a decision. We'll make a recommendation. PMBC sure. has not even been invited to uh, participate in this program officially. Understood. Uh, okay. Yes. So that will need to be uh, figured out because I, that's not what I was told from, from Anthony. So I'm not knowing what town meeting or select board <clears throat> has, uh, has told them that will need to be, be taken care of then. Okay. Um, so I will share that um, with everybody here. Uh, or Steve, if I send it to you, do you have a, a PMBC distribu a dis distribution? I don't have yeah, I, uh, a couple I, I of them. I can take care of that, sure. Thank you. Brian, uh, do you know who who prepared the um, energy model? Do you know who the designer is on that on board? Yeah, I know B it's BER. Okay. I think they're out of Easton. So what the... Yeah, also inside of that energy modeling and why I said it's so primitive um, is because they, we don't know what the requirements are, are going to be of the kitchen of the senior center. Uh, as it is a commercial kitchen, with it being all electric, that's going to change a lot of the uh, kitchen's design now with the, amount of, with the appliances and the, and the draw that's going to be there based upon how often Liz uses the kitchen. Question, um, Brian. Yep. Um, are we we still looking at a generator for the building? Good question. And so that's another uh, thing that is going to need to be addressed. Um, ultimately, if we're an all electric building, you know, and the power goes out, there will need to be some sort of um, uh, uh, belts and suspenders in place in order to make sure that the, that the building doesn't freeze uh, for an extended period of time. Uh, ultimately, a generator is a, is a large upfront cost. Um, and I think that the decision needs to be made by the by the town brass, and it's a, it's on my agenda for tomorrow, is to determine what the use of the senior center will be in the case of an emergency, whether it's going to be a, a, a cooling center or a charging center for, for people in the community to have. Um, 
it, the generator is currently in the drawings right now as a uh, as part of the the, the design. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, I'll say up front, a, a generator for this building to back up the entire building is going to cost a quarter million dollars. Um, so it's a uh, it's certainly something that needs to be addressed and and uh, decided. Um, and we'll also play a role in, in whether or not uh, the building is all electric and how it gets backed up. We had talked about in the uh, meeting, the generator and that being gas fired and also the, um, the kitchen. I think that the gas, you know, gas range and stuff like that in the kitchen would be a better setup than electric in there. Yep. It's uh, yep. certainly the, um, you know, that everyone has the different opinions about the uh, induction booking and, and uh, I'm not an expert on it, but um, that was one of the charges that were that we were brought up in the working group. Um, what you will see in the energy modeling as well, back to your point, Brian, is uh, there was a feasibility study done for photovoltaic system on this building. Uh, and so they did some rough takeoffs on what they felt the uh, a PV system on this building could generate and what that could offset based upon an all electric building and what the consumption would be. So uh, moving on from that, and I, I make sure that I, I follow up with you, Steve, I'll, I'll draw some minutes up uh, with a meeting between Anthony and Mark, um, along with the documents that I'm referencing that you can send out to the committee. Okay. On, a, on, another, on another note <clears throat> with the senior center, um, as it comes to procuring our construction manager at risk, um, I have completed the RFP uh, and I have distributed that to town council for review. Um, our selection committee, which was comprised of uh, Bob from, from the PMBC, myself, uh, a representative from LLB, uh, Liz, the senior center director, and Anthony Ansaldi, um, that was our selection committee. Uh, Anthony has requested that he remove himself from the selection committee based upon uh, other commitments. So I wanted to bring that up and get that uh, documented at the PMBC in case we do get any requests uh, to provide the evaluations that we've done. Um, we do have a meeting scheduled for two o'clock tomorrow. Bob, I, I, I didn't get to talk to you today, but the Two o'clock is usually the standing meeting that we have for working group. If you can't make it, that's okay. I want to just go over our evaluation so that we're all on the same page about what's going to be distributed to the construction managers. I won't be available. We've got a, um, a tour scheduled for tomorrow. So okay. I won't be available. So I will, I will follow up with you and let you know, but I've, I've received all your information and we'll, and we'll go from there. Okay. Um, ultimately, the this... Uh, it was a good evaluation process. What this will do is narrow it down to um, what I believe is, is three construction managers that will be receiving the request for proposals. We will have a mandatory walkthrough uh, at the tennis courts to give a lay of the land. Uh, they will also be provided with all of the documents to date from LLB, the architects. Uh, and there's strict guidelines on what they need to present to us on their price and non-price, um, on their price and technical proposals. Um, the schedule that I'm putting in this RFP is putting our interviews, uh, scheduling for the third week of October and ultimately negotiating and get a contract in hand the first week of November for the construction manager to start pre-construction services. Um, one of their first tasks will be to, to help create an estimate to reconcile against LLVs at this point. Uh, and then they'll also be working with us hand in hand in uh, refining that estimate, value engineering, descoping, um, if we need to, uh, as well as working here with the PMBC um, about decisions that need to be made. Ultimately, when they get on board, and, and Steve, I would ask this first, if you know a representative from the CM, if they wanted to come and, and sit down, and if there was anything that needed to be just spoke about, it, you know, obviously it would it be in their contract that they would uh, be obligated to come and and uh, provide us some some updates as well. Good. Okay. Now, as far as the <clears throat> excuse me interview process, that's typically the selection committee. But if Anthony has uh, excluded himself from the um, review part, is he still eligible for participation in the um, interview? 
so the my answer to that it would be no and but anyone and everyone is available to come to the interviews and 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 watch the interviews and participate and provide their input the selection committee has been established before this and it'll be those four members that ultimately uh, do their rankings and provide their evaluation on who they're who they're selecting for um, for this job. Okay, thanks for the clarification. Yep. Any other questions on the senior center? Hearing none, I'll go you know, on to member input. Uh, Bob, Steve, you want to do the minutes? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I do. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> excuse me, I'm just getting over COVID. Um, again? Yeah, again. Yeah. You know, two, two uh, shots and two boosters didn't seem to help me much. Um, <clears throat> I distributed some uh, comments, uh, revisions to the minutes of uh, our last meeting on 814. Are there any... Uh, comments or discussion on the minutes? Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes of uh, 814? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Oh, Bartlett. thanks, Bartlett. Um, is there a second? I'll second it, Bob Romley. Okay, all in favor, Bob? Bob Romley, yes. Bartlett? Bartlett, yes. Uh, Brian? I guess he's holding his thumb up. Is that is that an approval? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. I was trying to I was trying to find the unmute button on my phone. Sorry about that. <laughs> Brian Bestwell, yes. And uh, Mike, Mike Scaduto, yes. And Steve Moore, yes. Uh, motion approved. We'll move on to member input. Uh, Bob, anything? All set. Uh, Mike, I'm good. Uh, Bartlett, I'm good. Thanks. Uh, Brian. Brian, I'm all set. Thank you. And uh, I'm all set also. Uh, thanks for your participation. We'll see you at the next meeting. Motion to adjourn. Oh, yeah. Second. Second. Is there a motion to adjourn? Yeah. Yep. Motion to adjourn. That was Bartlett. Is there a second? Second. Bob, <laughs> Bob seconds. Uh, Bob, no, uh, all, in, all in favor? Bob? Bob Romney, yes. Mike? Mike Scaduto, yes. Uh, Bartlett? Bartlett, yes. Brian? Brian Pasquale, yes. And Steve Moore, yes. Thanks, everyone, and uh, we'll see you at the next meeting.